Hey guys, welcome to my first instructional video, um, official instructional video. Um, I'm just going to start with a wet out to wet and show you how I start a painting. Um, this is an 8x10 on a watercolor block, hot press, as you can see. It's primarily glued. Um, and I just tape and work right on the block. This way it makes it more transportable since I move around quite a bit. Um, the supplies I have is I have a very large watercolor brush I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, it's a size 50 and it's the Master's Touch um, brand which means that it was a little bit more affordable and I was able to get it I think 40% off with one of their wonderful coupons. And I will also be using um, my 12 Da Vinci blend brush. Um, so I have my water, I have my salt and my rubbing alcohol sitting here waiting for me because I use quite a bit of that. The other um, tool I use quite a bit um, in this process is a toothbrush uh, to do some splatters and, and things of that nature. So my goal at this stage at the very beginning is to be very loose um, relaxed, more free spirit, and I'm just trying to get the movement down um, and colors to start with. This is also where I play with a lot of texture. Um, I also know that this is going to um, dry lighter than what I put it down as. So I'm taking this really big brush. It's perfect for um, the blocks because then I can just drop in water like so. And I go over it a couple times just to make sure it's even. I'm also using hot press, which means that it soaks up the water a lot faster. Cold press does not. But I like hot press because then I can have um, more control in my drawing. I also keep a spray bottle with me so that I can spray and keep it moist um, as I work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work with my primary palette, which is usually um, Fidelo Blue or Ultramarine Blue, um, Rose, and um, I like to use Gamboge, and those are my essential colors. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the Gamboge lay in. So we always work light to dark so um, I'm going to lay that in here in her. This back here I know you can't really see it but there's a moon back there so her shadows are going to be warmer. And then her highlights are actually going to be bluer. So to do that I'm going to grab um, some phthalo blue and I'm going to water it way down. Some people use cerulean. I don't like cerulean because it's not as transparent as I'd like it to be. So I'm just going to lay in. The only, I guess, disadvantage to phthalo blue is the um, permanency of it. It's not, it, um, Definitely, if you, if you hear that in the background, it's my lovely cat scraping stuff up. Um, I want it, it, it uh, stains really hard, you know, it's you can't very you can't lift it up, but I like that I can put color through it. So, um, I put a very light wash of that down so I don't need to worry about being too dominating. I'm also going to put some of it in her hair along the edges where I know that there's going to be some moonlight. I'm not going to worry so much about her. I think I'm going to get a little bit into her hair and then I'm going to work on the rest in the background. Um, now at this point I don't know what her colors are, like what, 
color her hair is, what color her fin is, etc. Um, so at this moment, what I do instead is I think about my collection of mermaids I'm working on right now and who do I not have. I don't have any black hair. And yeah, I don't think I have, I have some dark hair, um, but I don't think I have any black. So, um, and there's going to be that moon behind her. So it might be kind of nice to have some black hair. So to do black, I'm going to go ahead and get some more of the um, Fethela Blue. And I'm going to go ahead and drop it in here. I'm going to add a little bit more water in my brush because I'm going to use that as the basis for my black. Black is always, for me, color first and then I'll add the black or something of the similarity of that. Okay, so it's going to bleed into her chin. So I'm drying off my brush and your brush is a sponge. It needs to hold all that water to put down on the paper, right? So if something happens in a place that you don't want it to happen, use it to pick it up. So see the shoulder here? It's kind of bleeding into the shoulder. I'll zoom in for you, see if I can do this. So it's bleeding into the shoulder. I've rinsed out my brush. I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna soak it up. I'm gonna pull out the color. I did lose some of my blue there, but I'm not that concerned about it. That's always, I can always fix that. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna do the background. I'm gonna check, background needs water again. Oh, and it's bleeding into her face too. Whoopsies, here we go a little too wet around there. Okay. So I'm going to take my handy spray bottle. Very light mists. Okay. Just enough to give me some water to work with. I'm going to go ahead and lay in my background. So back here, to help separate it from the hair, because we've got the sky, I'm going to grab some violet. Because remember my shadows are going to be warm so I'm going to start with violet and if I need to warm it up I will. I'm going to add water and I want texture. I'm going to go around the moon. I can always fix my edges later. I'm not that concerned about them. And I'm going to add plenty of water on the edges here because that gives me time. Water is my friend and it gives me time. I'm just going to go ahead and try to get some more texture and play. And then I have some waves down here, so I'm going to go around those, kind of like what I did with the hair. I'm going to give some suggestion. There's some foam going on. A lot of um, other artists will use like masking fluid. I just haven't really been one for that. You can, and I think we'll use some masking fluid in other areas of this painting, but right now, not gonna happen. Now, when you get to the hair, what do you do? Well, Hair is going to be darker than the background, so I'm not too concerned. So I'm just going to drop in some color, go around it. Let it be 
see what it's going to be. One of the best ways to work in watercolor, in my opinion, is to be free with it and give it room to do what it wants to do. You will be happier with the results if you give watercolor room to be watercolor. All right, so I'm going to drop in a few more water drops. It's starting to dry in some spots, and I want to make sure I get some water down in those areas. And then I'm going to grab some salt. Before that dries too quickly, I'm going to put some salt down. And as you'll see, after I do that, I'm going to move to the water, but I will come back. I'm going to clean off my brush, dry it off on the paper towel. I'm going to soak up that purple because that's technically part of the moon. Is it going to perfectly take care of that purple? No, but that purple will fade and it'll just become part of the moon. So then I'm going to get the water down. For the water, I'm going to use the phthalo blue again. I want to connect the mermaid with the water. So kind of follow my ways. And because I'm painting water, I want to use a lot of water. Kind of makes sense, right? This also will give me more time to play. And there's waves here with white caps, so I want to make sure I get those caps. As I get closer to her, I kind of lift my brush up more. I get a more of a tip when I do that. Okay. So then I'm actually going to switch brushes. This one's doing too much water for me. See all this right here? It's a big puddle. It's too much for me, so I'm going to soak some of it up, and I'm going to move to a smaller brush that doesn't hold as much water, so I have more control. So I'm going from a 12 to an 8. As I'm painting down here, I'm also keeping an eye on what's going on up here, waiting for that the perfect opportunity to get those Right, water drops. Not quite yet. They're still a bit too dry. Or too wet, I mean. So I'm going to also throw in, sticking with the palette that I've chosen, I'm going to grab some gamboge and I'm going to throw some of it in here to give me some greens. Now you can't see my lines anymore, and I can barely see my lines, but I also know that when it dries, I will see my lines because it dries lighter, remember? I'm also going to throw in a new color. I'm going to throw in some of my rose. I use a lot of Quincidone rose.
And I'm also going to throw that in where I know I want my shadows to be. This, to be honest with you, is getting away from me because I don't really know what I want it to do. So at that point, when that happens, I go a little extreme. So I'm grabbing rubbing alcohol and I'm dipping my brush in it. And I'm just gonna gently tap come on, my brush. And I'm gonna just get some spots in there. Rinse out my brush, and I'm going to go back in, and I'm just going to add water. But what about all the waves and the water caps? And what if you know I can't make them out anymore when it's done and dry, and you know freak out? It's not going to work. Not true. You just end up problem solving. Well, won't some of these other steps that you can do solve that problem solving in the long run? Maybe, probably. But then I feel like I lose some of the process of spontaneous uh, spontaneity and kind of let the muse take over, let the painting do what it wants to do. That's more important to me because I'll tell you, it surprises me more often than not what it chooses to do. So I'm just going in and just amplifying some of the waves and the watercress, watercress or the foam, the sea foam, you know what I mean? I don't mind it. I mean, it's got some fun color. I'm going to go ahead and grab the violet that I put up here, and I'm gonna throw some of it down here. Because I also know in this area, I wanna show a little bit more light, so I'm gonna put more dark down here. Okay, so here it's got what I call a sheen. And the sheen is it's almost dry, but not quite to where it's not impressionable. But if you can see, the sheen is perfect for water drops. Now up here, it's still really, really wet. So I need to wait for that area to dry just a bit more before I can do more of these. This area, there just wasn't enough pigment. It's in the right place as far as adding water drops, but I didn't add enough paint right there. So what I think I'm going to do is just go ahead and add more paint there. my brush a bit, add some water. Pull it around and just do the same process again. So I'm going to add some salt just like I did before. Just a sprinkle. And then I'm gonna let that dry a bit more until I get that sheen and then I'll add water drops. 
I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more salt over here after adding those water drops. And now I'm waiting for this to have a sheen. It's still very wet. You can see all the water bumps. When it's really, really, really bumpy, that means it's really, really, really wet. So if I were to add any more water here, I would get pools of water. Okay. So I want to wait till that dries and there's just this very light sheen of water and that tells me it's ready for um, some more water drops. So what do I do when I'm in this stage? Well, I'm kind of waiting for it to dry for sure. I can go in here and play with my moon a little bit, um, at least get some, the base color of it. Now, moons aren't just white. They look kind of white, but they're not white white. So I'm going to actually combine my Fidelo blue and my violet to get kind of a grayish tone a lot of it over my palette and I know that you can't see my palette and I apologize not having a studio kind of makes it limiting around here yeah I can find a better setup for the next one So I'm going to grab it, I've charged my brush, meaning I've filled up my brush. I'm going to put it down, but then I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm just going to play with the water. I'm just going to pull it around. I know if I go to the edges, they're going to blend. I'm not going to freak out about that. I'm going to let it happen because I also know I'm going to add far more later on but this will definitely soften the edge and the moon has craters right so again we're going to wait for the sheen probably drop in a few drops of bolder color You know, and another thing you can do when this happens and they blend together, use it to your advantage. You've got colors mixing. Use that purple, this part of your moon. I'm gonna go in with my brush very gently kind of just soften those edges. This all happens all at once. My mind is always thinking about what the next step is. And that fear you feel, it doesn't really go away. You just get better at using it. Okay, I think I can do water drops up here. I wait for the moon. I can do some water drops over here. And the sheen has arrived. The sheen has also arrived over here, as you can see. If you look here real quick, it's not as shiny as it was before. That means it's dried up a bit. I mean, it's still wet. It's a sheen, but I can definitely add watermarks.
there's something very freeing for me who's I'm kind of a control freak um, when it comes especially when it comes to my art but in life too ask my husband um, but with this I get to let go of control and that's really rewarding for me I'm gonna add some more salt over here to balance it out so it kind of feels like this one over here go ahead and add it in the moon a few water drops in the moon for craters. I'm doing all this from imagination. I don't have a picture of the moon with me. Even though we just had the super moon, which is kind of what inspired this. Kind of like the eclipse. I enjoy kind of documenting major events. There's some crisp edges around here. I'm just going to add water, blend them into the hair. A few more water drops over here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of something in the rock. It's going to be wet onto dry. And I'm just going to make kind of a light purple. I'm keeping in mind of the light that's going to be coming from the moon. I also kind of have a, a wave right here, so I want to be respectful of that. And I got rocks over here. Grab some of that phthalo blue again. the rocks. And from this point, I just wait to be surprised. If you have any questions about this whole process, um, I'm more than open, obviously, to answer those questions. Um, just leave them in comments. Um, you know, this is a new learning process for me to do these um, through video and um, teaching on a completely different platform than what I'm used to. So um, help me grow and help me teach you. And um, the next one, we will continue to uh, build her up. Thanks for joining me. Bye.